such, though on a far greater scale, was the wickedness of the antediluvian world. But the end was approaching. God looked down a second time upon the spreading demoralization beneath him and saw that it would be necessary at the closing years of respite to sweep man and beast, creeping thing and fowl from the face of the earth. Yet a third time the Creator beheld, and lo, evil had made such fearful progress that all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. Then he foretold the impending ruin to Noah, who alone found grace in his sight, and instructed him how he might avoid the universal doom. The commands laid upon the patriarch were a strong trial of his faith. He was to proclaim the speedy coming of a catastrophe, which to unbelievers would appear simply irrational, of an overwhelming flood which should sweep all life from the face of the whole earth. Until September 22nd, midday. And if the ark isn't finished by then, you will be. Is that when it's going to happen? September 22nd, midday? We can readily picture to ourselves the contempt and derision which must have been poured out upon the prophet. Our own times will teach us how men of science soon proved that such a thing as a universal flood was an absolute impossibility, contrary to all the known laws of nature. And since Noah persisted, the world doubtless settled down into a belief that he was a weak-minded fanatic, void of intellect, and altogether unworthy of science. But Noah was not only directed to foretell the approaching doom, he was also bidden to make open preparations for avoiding it, preparations too of vast magnitude, and such as must have attracted general attention. And a grievous burden it undoubtedly was to endure scoffs and deridings, with which he must have been continuously assailed while building his immense ship on the dry land. Far it may be from any water, but by faith he persevered, and at last the days of his trial drew on to their close. None had listened to his warnings. Not one beyond the inner circle of his own family was accounted worthy to be saved. But the ark was now completed, and he was instructed to enter it with his wife, his sons, and their wives, and all the creatures which were impelled by God to go with him. He was at no loss to understand the significance of the command. He knew well that the wrath of God was being restrained only till those which should be saved had been taken out of the way. And we can imagine his feelings as he watched the long procession slowly filing into the ark, and at length followed in its rear, leaving the unconscious world, friends and foe alike, in the inexorable grasp of destruction. It may be that after entering he returned to the door, appalled at the thought of what was about to happen, and moved to make one more effort one last impassioned appeal if perchance he might constrain some few at least to flee to the shelter but if he did he found the entrance to the ark closed god had shut it there was none that could open it affrighted crowds might gather around imploring admittance but noah had no longer the power to aid them the 
separation had been made. Eight persons were safe within the ark, and the whole remainder of mankind was shut out for judgment. The acceptable year had passed by. The days of vengeance were to come.